So we're going to start with an example. Ryan is four months, 23 days old. He was administered the criterion referenced assessment known as the Infinib. His total raw score was 67, which placed him in the transient category in terms of his neurological development. He was also administered the norm referenced assessment, the Alberta Infant Motor Scales, or the AIMS. He received a raw score of 11, which placed him in the fifth percentile compared to other children his age. So what if he had been born six weeks prematurely? Would we interpret his test results differently? And the answer is yes. Any child who is born um, at least four weeks premature, uh, we correct for prematurity up to age two. So here I've outlined the six steps for adjusting for prematurity. So if you come across a situation where you are serving a child who is two years old or less and who was born at least four weeks early, um, these are the steps that you would use to adjust their age for prematurity so that you are um, assessing them um, properly and appropriately. So the first step is to calculate the child's chronological age in months and days. As I said previously, you need to make sure that the baby is at least two years old. If they are over two years old, you are not going to correct for prematurity, so there's no need to do this adjustment. If they are at least uh, 24 months old, then you need to determine the week's gestational age that the child was born. If you do verify that the baby was born at least four weeks early, so they were born before 37 weeks gestational age, then you proceed with adjusting for prematurity. You subtract the weeks of gestational age at birth from 40. 40 is a term pregnancy. So for example, if the baby was born at 32 weeks gestational age, um, you take 40 minus 32, and that lets you know that that baby was born eight weeks early. You multiply the number of weeks premature the infant was by seven to get the number of days of prematurity. You divide that number by 30, and if you remember back to sort of your early kind of fifth and sixth grade probably division, you'll get a whole number and a remainder when you do that long division. The whole number is the number of months premature, and the remainder is days. And then finally, you subtract those months and days of prematurity from the child's chronological age. So let's go to examples. So going back to Ryan, um, we're going to go ahead and adjust for his prematurity. So the first step is to calculate his chronological age in months and days. And so to do that, you sort of set up a grid like I've done here um, with the year, the month, and the day. And then you start with today's date. So today's date, um, the year is 2013, the month is August, and the day is the 27th. And Ryan's date of birth in this example is also in 2013, but it's April 4th, so he's 4-4 four, four of 13. And then we're simply going to subtract that, so 27 minus 4 is 23, 8 minus 4 is 4, and 13 minus 13, of course, is 0. So what we have is that Ryan is 4 months and 23 days old. That's his chronological age. Because he's less than 24 months old, we do know we need to move forward with determining whether we need to adjust for prematurity. We determine the week's gestational age that the child was born. If the child was born before 37 weeks gestational age, you must correct for prematurity. So we know from our example that Ryan was born at um, 34 weeks of gestational age. We subtract the week's gestational age at birth from 40. So 40 minus 34 is six, and so that tells us that Ryan was six weeks premature. Multiply by seven to get the number of days premature. So we're gonna take those six weeks premature, we're gonna multiply that by seven, and that's gonna give us 42 days. So Ryan was 42 days premature. Then we're gonna divide that number by 30. So 30 into 42. So 30 goes into 42 once, and then we take away 30, and we have our remainder of 12. So we know that Ryan was one month and 12 days premature. And then we subtract the months and days of prematurity from the child's chronological age. So again, we're going to set up that grid years, months, and days. And so we know that Ryan's chronological age is zero years, 
four months and 23 days. And his, um, the adjustment that we need to make is zero years, but it's one month and 12 days. Then we're going to subtract, and that's going to give us 11 days, three months. So Ryan's adjusted age is three months, 11 days. And so when we assess Ryan, we should really look at him and interpret his scores as though he's three months and 11 days old rather than four months and 23 days that his chronological age suggests. And so in this situation, I'm using the terminology adjusted age. Um, at times, you'll also hear the term corrected age used as well. So what does this mean for Ryan? Well, we know that if we look at him at four months, 23 days, his chronological age versus three months, 11 days, which is his adjusted age, that that makes a difference for the way his test scores are interpreted. His infinite bra score of 67, um, the difference is um, him being considered as transient neurologically versus neurologically normal on that assessment. And, we look, and when we look at his AIM score of 11, if we look at that score, um, considering that he's four months, 23 days, it puts him in the fifth percentile um, compared to other children his age. However, if we look at him as though he's three months, 11 days, it puts him in the 31st percentile compared to other children his age. So really, this difference might make the difference between us um, being concerned and, and possibly even referring Ryan for services versus just kind of watching him and knowing that he's really within average range for his adjusted age. So a couple of other examples, um, we'll, just to uh, practice this a little bit. So let's look at Allison. Um, Allison was born on 5 17 12, and she was born at 26 weeks gestational age. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our chart here. So year, month, day, and then we'll go here's today, and then her date of birth. So today is, whoops, 8-27 of 2013. And we see here that her date of birth, the year is 12, the month is 5, the day is 17. So we're going to subtract, and we're going to get 10 days, 3 months, 1 year. So 15 months and 10 days is her chronological age. And so that's less than 24 months of chronological age, so we know that we need to correct for prematurity. She was born at 26 weeks gestational age, so she was certainly born before 37 weeks. And so let's take 40 minus 26, and that's going to give us 14. So she was 14 weeks premature. In order to find the number of days, we're going to multiply that by 7. And so 14 weeks times 7 days per week um, is going to give us an 8, carry that to 98 days. So she was 98 days premature. If we divide that by 30, 30 into 98, we get, goes into 33 times, subtract that 90, and then we'll get 8. And then we have that remainder of 8. So we know that she was 3 months and 8 days um, premature. And so we'll just simply subtract that then from the chronological age that we calculated over here. So we're going to subtract that three months and eight days. And what we'll get is 12 months, two days. So for this child, for Allison, we would assess her as though she were a 12-month-old rather than a 15-month-old. Here's another example. This example is for Michael. Michael was born on October 30th of 2011 at 32 weeks gestational age. So year, month, day, we set up our grid here. And then today, once again, is August 27th. And we've got a date of birth of October 30th. And so we start again over here with the days and we subtract. So we can't take 
30 away from 27. So if we think back to old um, subtraction math or elementary school math, we know that we have to borrow. So we're going to borrow a month. Um, and because a month is 30 days, we're going to borrow that month. When we bring it over to our days column here, we're going to add 30. So that's going to change that to 57. So 57 minus 30 is 27 days. Moving over to our months, once again, we have this problem. We can't take 10 away from 7. So once again, we're going to have to borrow this time from our years. So we'll borrow um, because when we take a, a year is 12 months, we're going to add 12 here. So we're going to make that into 19. So 19 minus 10 is 9, and then 12 minus 11 is 1. So we have one year, 9 months, and 27 days which is 21 months, 27 days. That's our chronological age. And so again, that's less than 24 months. So we know that we need to correct. So 40 minus 32 is eight. That's eight weeks. We're gonna multiply that by seven. It's 56 days premature. We're going to divide that by 30 and that's going to give us one month minus 30 days. So we've got one month, 26 days as our remainder. So that's how premature um, Michael was. And so we're just going to subtract that. So one month, 26 days. So 27 minus 26 is 1. And then 21 minus 1 is 20. And so Michael is, um, has an adjusted age of 20 months and one day. And then our final example is for Hannah. Hannah was born on July 18th of 2011, and she was born at 24 weeks gestational age. So once again, we're going to set up that grid. And we've got today and our date of birth. So 13, 8, 27 is our day. And then Hannah's date of birth is 11, 7, 18. And we're going to do that subtraction. So 27 minus 18 is 9. 8 minus 7 is 1. 13 minus 11 is 2. So Hannah is 2 years, 1 month, and 9 days. So she's 25 months, 9 days old. And so we know that we stop here because even though she was born quite prematurely, she is over 24 months old. And so we don't correct for prematurity in this instant. And we go ahead and we assess Hannah as though she were a 25-month-old infant. So that, in a nutshell, is how you correct for prematurity um, with a few examples. And if you would like more examples, um, just... Let me know or you are welcome to review this video and um, rework these examples um, to gain a better understanding of this process.